Hi everyone. Good afternoon. Yeah. Good afternoon. Yeah. Today's topic is uh, no JS, uh, JavaScript disabled. Uh, you know, functionality related development. Okay. So uh, before we jump into the no JS supports, okay, uh, let's uh, you know uh, understand how it came into the picture. Okay. So you guys, uh, okay, might be aware about uh, PWS, progressive web and uh, progressive web apps, correct? So what are those progressive web apps? Uh, so you guys may be, you know, aware about it that, uh, you know, right now each and every web application uh, supports uh, each and every, you know, browser, each and every platform for say, for example, say uh, Chrome browser support, Internet Explorer, Firefox, okay uh, ios app android app windows app okay all kind of platforms and systems uh, related supports uh, your application should provide such kind of support okay that is the progressive web apps okay so this is how you know uh, node.js came into the picture uh, that your uh, application should support uh, when we disable javascript okay some of the browsers right now okay some popular browsers provide uh javascript related support but there are some of the browsers okay who doesn't provide you know supports of javascript properly not fully fledged support of javascript okay these are so here you know some of the uh, reasons couple of reasons i'll mention uh, that uh, why we need node.js support in your application okay so first reason as i mentioned some of the browsers uh, you know does not provide uh, proper support of uh, javascript another reason uh, can be a security okay so uh, you know when uh, javascript is enabled okay as we already know that you know some of the uh, crawlers you know can uh, insert malicious code into your you know uh, uh, in through browsers uh, in they can insert malicious software into your machines okay that can affect i mean they can hack uh, your machine, something like that, okay? So it will affect your machine. Another thing is that, uh, you know, some of the companies currently, you know, are active. I mean, they are running such kind of business model that they can, you know, track your data, how much data you are consuming. They, they, are, they are tracking your personal information using, uh, all these things are possible, you know, when JavaScript is enabled. When JavaScript is disabled, then all such kind of, you know, uh, uh, such kind of, uh, uh functionality won't work so these are the couple of reasons okay that's why you know uh client demands for you know no js support some of the users right now still you know uh, turn off their javascript in the browser and they access the websites okay they access the web applications so yeah these these are the you know couple of reasons uh, another reason uh, can be a uh, uh, if you if you have a limited data okay internet data you could, if you have limited uh, access of data then you know you can you know just turn off uh, the javascript in your uh, browser and access the web application so it 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 will consume you know uh, less data in compare uh, when javascript is enabled you uh, for example you know you uh, uh, if you have you know if you do not have proper connection proper wi-fi connection then gmail will uh, give you a notification that load basic uh, uh, basic application so these are the couple of reasons okay when you are developing progressive web app you should consider while developing your application web application so that is how uh, you know node.js concept uh, came into the picture uh, so far, I, I mean, I hope everyone uh, understood that why, you know, uh, we are covering this topic and why we are, you know, uh, giving such kind of functionality in your web application. Okay. So, yes, yes. Yes. So let's go ahead. I mean, uh, so how can we, you know, provide such kind of feature uh, when JavaScript is disabled? Okay. So. Uh, some of you guys are already aware about that. Uh, whoever have used, you know, .NET, PHP, all these kind of technology. 
so earlier you know when javascript was not popular you know when uh, earlier you know web applications were uh, you know uh, uh, develop using you know server side rendering only using dotnet the php laravel you know using these technologies you know all all of, uh, all operations small even small small operations we were performing through uh, server only okay you so this concept you know uh, uh, we we are using here to provide no js support okay so as as i mentioned that uh, you know uh, when JavaScript is not there, okay, so then all uh, operations, all operations like uh, uh, JavaScript is a, you know event-driven programming language. Then all uh, all event-driven operations will not work here. Okay, whatever uh, you know uh, you are going to develop, you will uh, you will have to you know develop in such a way that uh, uh, it will request to the server and uh, it will give you a response so uh, for such kind of functionality you know we came up through server side rendering concept and here we are using angular universal so what is angular universal angular angular universal is you know using the node.js server uh, to render templates okay instead of to, re to render templates uh, using node server only so it is using server side rendering concept so let me share my screen is it visible correct yes 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 yeah so as i mentioned when you, you know uh, disable javascript now then uh, whatever uh, operations you are, uh, you are performing okay in angular or in any you know front end framework okay client side uh, operations that won't work when you disable the javascript so what uh, what should be i mean how we, uh, we can develop uh, such kind of functionality okay so there are you know couple of guidelines we are following right now okay and i'll show you the demo that how uh, we actually developed such functionality okay so there are simple basic three rules we are following following right now to provide such kind of you know uh, supports to so just starts with the plain well structure html okay so when javascript is not there then on, we have only two option okay for templating uh, html and css only so whatever functionality html html is providing we can consume such kind of functionality to pro provide you know to achieve our functionality and through CSS, we can, you know, uh, uh, develop, a, I mean, interactive uh, user interface. So right now, you know, in our web application, okay. So these two uh, points, you know, uh, we have focused on these two points more, okay, rather than, you know, uh, JavaScript uh, related functionality, whatever uh, requirement we are getting from client, okay. First, we think about it that uh, if we can achieve with HTML and CSS on CSS only or not, okay, then uh, we we are applying third layer of JavaScript. Okay, so these are the three thumb rules we are following right now to give Node.js support. Okay. So let me give you a couple of examples. Okay, let's start with a small small uh components okay uh, for example this is a button component So uh, mostly button component, okay, button uh, we are using, why we are using this button okay, in our application. First of all, we are using this button to, you know, just to submit the form, okay. And, uh, you know, perform some actions, for example, on click of button, okay, it is redirecting to some another web page or, you know, it uh, perform uh, some, I mean, 
some logic okay uh, to uh, to achieve such kind of functionality we are using button component okay so when javascript it, javascript is disabled okay so event won't work click event uh, and all these events uh, you know uh, won't work so how can we you know uh, use this button component so we have uh, uh, we have sub uh, we have form supports in html okay uh, so when you uh, when you are using a button uh, inside that form to submit the form so using that html forms simple html forms these are the simple html forms forms okay right now we are following this concept only to uh, i mean uh, when we have forms uh, on our web pages okay so this is the way we are using uh, button right now okay and when uh, when we have such functionality that on click of particular button if you want to uh, move to another web page or if you want to perform uh, some you know uh, some operation then uh, we conditionally we are you know uh, rendering anchor tag instead of button so whatever uh, when javascript is disabled now then uh, you are unable to you know uh, maintain the state locally so whatever operations you are performing you will have to perform uh, in such a way that you will you will have all data uh, you know uh, in query params okay for example let me try So uh, this is the example. I mean, uh, it won't work right now here because JavaScript is disabled. But in in when JavaScript is disabled, now then uh, you will have to take care that uh, you know whenever you uh, you want to uh, perform such kind of operation, uh, redirection and all, then uh, you use in uh, anchor tag instead of button. You can use buttons to uh, to submit the forms. Okay. and uh, there is another example let's say accordion okay this is the accordion we have developed okay so how uh, we have developed this accordion uh, it is uh, it it will work properly in js as well as no js so uh, for such kind of functionality we have used only basic html tags only uh, nothing else uh, detail and summary tag we have used over here okay detail and summary tag so this is the way uh, we have achieved uh, accordion functionality so using html and css only you know we are trying to achieve uh, our requirement let's say uh, another example form controls for example for form elements okay so it's just a simple uh, input only uh, nothing else as i mentioned over here okay and when you submit the form now it will give you a data uh, here in url okay so you can use there are two methods available okay in html uh, post method and get method okay so using these methods uh, you can you know achieve your functionality uh, while submitting the form let's say function card So similarly, see here also we have used uh, you know checkbox in background. On check, it is opening a div, and on unchecked, it is you know uh, closing the div. So we have achieved a drop down kind of functionality over here. So whatever, uh, in short, whatever functionality you know, whatever requirement is there, first you will have to think that how you can achieve okay 
with the plain html structures uh, plain html and css structure and then you know you can give additional supports javascript related support okay it will work conditionally when javascript is disabled then it will uh, then it will give you a basic functionality using html and css and it will uh, when javascript is enabled now it will give you a extended functionality so right now this is the way uh, you know we have uh, achieved the javascript as well as uh, when uh, no js uh, related functionality in small small the uh, ui components so yeah uh, that's it from my side so how i mean how you can you know integrate this component okay inside the web pages and uh, how you can achieve okay whole web pages uh, uh, i mean when javascript is disabled how it will behave so uh, you will cover it right so kavi uh, can you go on you must sure. be again i have a question here yeah, yeah. Uh, so for that expand button right at the bottom yes okay. so you are achieving this via css or uh, you are doing some postback for this no we are achieving we are achieving it with css only okay um, so here as i mentioned we are using this detail and summary tags okay it will give you a functionality of you know collapse and expand so uh, same tags we are using over here okay and on click expand it is expanding <laughs> on click of it collapse it is collapsing and uh, this is the static view uh, okay uh, which, which is giving you a two lines of preview okay okay uh, so any... we showed this side for this uh, we don't have to write any custom css right that is a native element and it will take by default correct right? correct sir so here that that is the approach we are trying to follow okay we are using a native html tags only okay yeah. and we apply uh, we try to achieve functionality using css only hello kavi uh, if i want to implement a form uh, with a no js so uh, uh, i can only use a action there right action or post method form, form correct yes yes for form uh yes. if i uh -huh, yes uh, actually what i face now uh i uh, created a form and uh, on submit i'm getting the values in query params okay yeah. but uh, after uh, saving that data uh i want to redirect in another page so yes. uh it is not redirecting at that time so uh have you uh any idea about this because uh, it is only redirecting to whatever link I'm giving here in action. Okay. And uh, yes, and uh, after uh, calling API of save, uh, after this uh, response of API, uh, I uh, write a router uh, uh, router uh, dot navigate in another page. So it is not redirecting. OK. Do you so, know uh, why it is? Yeah. So first of all, as I mentioned, to achieve form related functionality you can use this one okay but when you perform uh, such kind of operation it's just i mean it it can be a technical issue uh, sadda because uh, i guess we have developed uh, you know forms correct uh, Tunmai, yes. uh, all thing is uh, doing I well uh, kavi explain that oh. uh, but uh, tanmay after that you need to use a post method na, then yes i'll explain that Bye. Okay, okay, fine. So, Kavi, are you done with your part? Kavi? Yes, Tanma, you can come. Okay. Kavi has, Kavi has done from his side. Okay, so Kavi, can you stop your screen? I think Kavi got disconnected somehow. Let me share the screen. Okay. So, so can you see? Can you see my screen? 
Yes. So, yes. so Kavi has already told you about that mm -hmm. Node.js. Okay. So first of all, we need to know that Node.js is not a technology. Okay. It is approach that we will work. Okay. There is certain certain guideline will be there. Okay. Hello. Yes. 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 So there will be some sort of guidelines will be there how we can achieve that one if any user has disabled JavaScript on the browser. Okay. So see, one thing you understand that no JavaScript is disabled. That not means that no nothing, no JavaScript function, JavaScript function will work. Okay. Not like that. See, if JavaScript not to get work, then Angular is based on JavaScript. Okay, so entire Angular is supposed to get st stop to stop working. That is not like that. So thing is that when there is no chat, when you disable the JavaScript, okay, in a browser, that time you don't have any browser events like a click event. You don't have on change event, show high t blood. Okay, these are the event that you do in the browser level. You can't do that. Okay, for that you need to you need to have the value in your query term, or you need to post the we need to post the value. Okay, query term means you same like you using like a get get methodology using a get whatever the data you want to do. Suppose there is a we already told you if I am not wrong dialogue so dialogue box so get yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, dialog box. Suppose see, it's the dialog box. If you are in JavaScript mode, just you click click here, and you you might have a show height feature in ng. If you have a if you uh, give a true value, it will show. If we if you give a false value, it will it will hide. The simple, very simple thing that you all have done in your day to day projects, right? But thing is that but. In our, you know, if when you disable the JavaScript, at that time you don't have this click event. So how you how we show the pop up over there, right? So for that one, we need to pass that value in query params. Okay, in the query params, we can see see open dialog true and dialog type default whatever the parameter is there. So when you will get this parameter param over there, okay, query param from this query param, there is the one methodology. And, uh, I'm going to in code level. I want to show you. Okay, see, when, suppose why I want to show you this one. Okay, from the I need to read the I need to read the query params. What we have done. So see, there we need to write this active router. Okay, this active router function will help us to read the query params. Suppose we have disabled. We have this, suppose we are disabling this this enter JavaScript. Okay, and I show you. We had disabled the JavaScript. Okay. Now again, I'm going to back to the page. Okay. So you need to think that uh, we cannot use that click event. Okay. Click event or change event, ng change, blur event, we can't use. Okay. So if we click on this, you see, enter page will get redirected because it's, it is query param. Okay. This URL it will hit, and in the URL we'll get a new value. And this function, it is a common is the Angular function, active route param query param, will help us to read the value from the from the URL. And in top on basis of that, it will show or hide whatever the ng if whatever the value you have written for show hide of this particular div, it will show and hide. Okay. Any question over here? Any understanding? So here, uh, in short, in on each and every unique URL, we are trying to render new web page, new right. document can, you can consider. Yes, yes. So any question arise in your mind, if you can ask. Yes. Uh, so uh, yes, yes, Tanmay. So mm. in Node.js, on mm. the uh, events are not working. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, only events, whatever the events. Uh, yes. For, Okay, other functionality of JavaScript is working. Yes, absolutely, discuss. absolutely. What? See. Yeah. Okay, okay, fine. See. Rauti. Yes, Kavi, you are doing something. Yes, yes, then I know you go ahead. Okay, so thing is that way. See, this entire web page 
is rendered on a node server okay like a new date or some for example you want a new date suppose you you might say java chisable how will get a new date you will get a new date when it, the entire page this entire page is rendered on node server okay only you seeing the view you will see the view with all the process data okay mm -hmm. This is the this is the main feature. Don't think like that. No, there is no JavaScript will be there. JavaScript you have you retain the functions that will work. Only you keep it mind that no events that is run in the browser will work. Never ever will work. Okay. For that we need to use a post methodology. We can use a hyperlink. We can use get methodology. These three are the only the way that we can get a data. Okay. So anyone having any question? Yes, Surajit. Yeah, in Angular, we are using ng model or ng model changes to detect the updated yes. value. No, so, you not you not more, get, you, you can't use that one. Yeah, mostly we are facing DJ surge in our projects. Yes, yes, you you face that one. See, whatever you you are what you are asking in form point of view this is a form might form having one 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 input element or it form having 100 input element right so see this is the only drawback of nodejs in runtime you suppose there you will retain maximum number of this input will be five characters suppose you are written and gone to the next page you, in that runtime you cannot do this one this is not possible okay for you for for you getting a new data of that validation you need to run, you go need to go back to your server side that is a SSR, new server side rendering why the server side rendering so whatever you do in the ui you, it will not give any type of error or not give any validation in the runtime you need to take that data you need to go back to your servers in the server side you need to do your all the validation over there in that you need to return over there okay this is this is this is a process you, every time you will not get from the query panel you need to post the data okay so this is this is this is a, this is a methodology okay that we need to follow okay okay so so mostly we have to face some uh, like uh, for nodejs we have two different functionality and uh, for angular perspectives uh, we have a different functionality no, not a different uh, autocad uh, is a not a total different uh, technologies but yes somewhere you need to write a sub short of code differently to achieve your your scenario because this scenario base okay suppose you are navy just you are navigating from one page to another page okay suppose for example see give me one second hmm? me i'm giving with a live example see suppose we are in this page okay and we click on this one you see this is a hyperlink the view not change okay we are just changing the value over there in the course and in the url we are passing the values okay in the query panel in route url we are passing the url with the id okay and in in this page suppose in course details we are reading this thing this uh, this query param and we doing the rest of the thing because there is no form element actually is in there just routing the page with some short of query query value this is a one way okay where you no need to write different all to cut different um, approach need to be right new different functionality need to be right nothing same thing will work for nodejs and js okay see same thing if i perform with nodejs what will happen just you see the see you are will be the same okay but there is a query this is a hyperlink is creating like a hyperlink okay so you know in our view in our uh angular we just change the view but when it will come to that angular thing then it will that high that routing will change it into hyperlink okay the same thing if you disable this one JavaScript usable same thing. See now the whole short of page will get uh, because it is it is acting like a hyperlink, not like a route link. 
so few minutes back na to sadda is asking that i had done my job is success process is coming from the router but my view getting changed but you are not getting changed this is the issue this is a not a issue this is a process you cannot if the uh, angular dom the when javascript is visible no they can change the view but to change the url there is only two three ways hyperlink post and get only these three process only you can change your url until and unless you can't change your url you may change your view okay but you cannot change because that is happening in this run time okay until and unless you create any sort of hyperlink or post or get action any action until it get from the browser it will not change the url but suppose then mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if if some functionality like that we don't we don't want it to redirect the page yes and yeah. wanted to change some functionality so yes. how we can achieve that yes so why can't you do that it's very simple if we if we go to this so suppose i'm showing you one form value okay i'm going with your form uh Okay. See. Okay, hold on. It will reload on same page. So yes, it, yes, it will reload on same page. You see. Yes. If we go to some calendar thing, that are having the value. If we go to add event. Okay. Suppose this is a form. Okay. And this form having this some validation is there. Okay. So I'm clicking in save. See all together the page got reloaded, okay. But you see this time there is no uh, no parameter is being passing through. Or only in response you are getting a false even false and validation is title. From this title I am using this query param. He is reading the query param. Okay, so validation is giving certain title. Means that in the title the, in my in my logic I had written like that. I am not going to the logic. I am telling that the way to understand the code. Suppose you can pass your own your short of parameters, okay? In the query pattern, when the page gets load, reloaded, that time we can understand, okay, there is the event is false, that means this page is not being submitted yet, and the validation is title is, is validation is there is title means the title is not there. So it's giving the enter title, okay? But on my in this case, page is reloaded now. Yes, it can reload it. Yes. Now, but if if we have some functionality like uh, we don't need to reload the page. No. Oh, no. No. Yes. No. Yes. Uh, in no. Yes, you cannot do that. Or every cannot time. Yes. Yes, absolutely right. Koshik is telling right. In no. Yes, we cannot do that. I told you first of all, first line I told. Runtime event, browser event will not work. We, you need to plan your code or you need to structure your code such a way that can support your Node.js approach. See, every time you work, you listen to this one, Node.js approach. The Node.js is not a technology. You need approach of writing is the, your script such a way that can have support in that Node.js approach. If someone visited your uh, visible JavaScript in your browser, still they can approach will be like that so if the so, application will be the, yes of course yes, okay. so let me add uh, one more thing here tanma is what are telling uh, absolutely right and let me uh, add one more thing here so the angular code we are written right now so what we are actually making some difference to support no chase that need to be understood so angular is written on a plain uh, means the javascript plain javascript so in the front end technology the browser also support that javascript that render the javascript or that have the javascript uh, mechanism rendering mechanism and the same code we are running on the back end server which is a node server that is also supporting the same javascript rendering engine so whatever the code is executing on your browser that can also render on the server side and reproduce the same output which you are seeing right now on the browser side so difference is that on js uh, enabled mode the code actually executing on the front end and on your actual browser 
rendering engine but for the no js environment the same angular code same angular code is executing on the server side with that node server in node node engine basically that is the only difference between uh, no js and js so so the question is why the uh, already answered by tanmay that why we actually unable to ha have an event on the front end side that where javascript is disabled the answer is that the when javascript is disabled the event is triggered by the user on the front end that have no javascript enabled yet so that event won't work on the front end but the when you submit that page with the different query param the query param hit the server and under, understanding that params uh, value we execute the code right and process that angular and reproduce that html and just return that html on the front end so that's why you get a different html based on your query parameter as it right tanmay he yeah, absolutely absolutely cause but kaushik tanmay uh, one question mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, if i am using ng if and ng model both okay Mm -hmm. So ng is working, NG but ng model is no. If ng model will not work because that is handled in the runtime on because the NG, why ng if it is working? Ng yes yes ng yes ng if because ng if is uh, executed or processed on server side. They, these yes. are you know the rendering in engine is have uh, two type of rendering engine in Angular supported. Uh, one is a GIT. And th second is that AOT sure. ahead of time, you know, ahead of time because they already pre-processed. So the AOT system can handle that ng if that they already knows. So they process it, produce that HTML, and return to that. But uh, the font in, when you executing these on the front end, they are uh, based on the user uh, user interaction. The, the, that value uh, doesn't have on the server side. So that will not work. Means there is a logic for Angular Universal or like that. Yes. 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 Angular Universal is taking care of that on that server side rendering of that Angular code. And that is also possible because Node is also a JavaScript engine, which is executing the same JavaScript uh on server side and executing the same javascript on the content okay okay so anyone has any question if you don't have any question then i will ask Debian to come monisa, you can you can discuss your issue that, that was sorted or what monisa uh, yes, that Monisha's issue. Yeah, mm -hmm. is Monisha yeah, in the call? Yes, yes, that patch one, no? Yeah. Okay, so they went. No, I want to. I, I want to add yeah. one more thing over here. Yeah, Monisha, yes. right? Uh, we was trying uh, post method and get get method with server, right? One one API. That time, object dot uh, assign was not working in Node.js, right? Uh, no, no, no. We can uh, convert. Uh, actually, that uh, response is coming in string. So I have converted to object, and then okay. I have read it. Then the all function, uh, JavaScript function was working in OJS, right? Like the uh, index of, and then yes, it will all work. basic functions. Yeah, that like all it. will work. That all will work. Index of positioning, all works. All the JavaScript thing will work. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, so Tanmay also uh, claim, coming claim, to uh, Sardha's questions, I says click event is not working in Node.js, but apart from click other events like on blur, on focus, all those things will not work. It will not it work. Right? Not. No, no. no, it will not work. It will not work. I all the browser event, all the browser event. If I miss some of the event, just make it sure all the browser event that you can see in the runtime, clicking these and happening, show hide. It is having focus in, focus out. These will not work in Node.js, but that if you really like to work on the Node.js, so you can use to have some post technology you need to use the So I I I'll, I'll take five more minutes like that. So I need to add it when suppose you need to bring one 
one chunk of data having hundreds of queries and suppose you are dealing with a form that having hundreds of hundreds of input screens okay and you need to pass the value from one page to page b so what will be your approach you are you are doing through query param or you will have some different approach anyone any guesses anyone having any any idea if i have two page page a page b and page a having 100 fields and we need to take that 100 field data to page b to no js so what should we do any any idea anyone can guess something no it should be, it will be from go via form post method itself only I think. absolutely yes. which we used in current module yes absolutely just i want to show this this thing it's fit is the and you need to use this one okay see suppose this when you see the structure of your angular ssr you will see one one file will be there server.es okay in every ssr uh, more, um, um, folder structure you will, you will see this one this is by default you will come because this is the only file who used to run as a as a node server in the back end okay this file used to help that one okay here you can make your own apis okay which will handle the post methodology or get method or anyone can do okay you can write the code over here also it will be much more bigger okay if you write all the code in one file okay to reduce that one we can use one help one file you can assign this class over here okay we'll take it is extension okay is extension version where you write your own api calls and you process your all validations. What you just asking all the validations, all those stuff you can do. And from the node side, is it that shut the user thing? From the node side, we can redirect this URL. You see? Uh -huh. Okay. So this, 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 if you can say the limitation is the limitation. If you see, you can tell it's a feature, it's a feature. Okay. But in the node base, we can change the DOM. But for the change in the URL, you need only three way: post, get, or hyperlink okay so this is okay. this is acting as a hyperlink this is this is a this is a callback redirect url that we can throw from the server side okay in in api if you see dot net apis also sometimes there is a callback url okay when the when the browser on the api get success can success they should they might have a, a redirect url which will take your application to different url with short of some sort of value so the same thing because it is acting as a, your middle layer okay what's not in dot server but it's acting as a middle layer where you can use to act like a server for your web application it will actually this is only the uh, file which is helping to control your ssr server side entry okay so that's all from my side if you need anything come up to me i can explain you okay Thank you. So Devan, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I we can hear you. Thank you. Great. So uh, the topic that you know we'll be discussing now it's it's very tricky. The estimation part, right? That how are we going to do estimations and everything. Uh, so I think uh, I'm I. I might not have you know something to demo to you but let's make this session a bit interactive okay so let's you know contribute all together and see you know what we can come up with okay so first of all uh, i'll be sharing my screen i'll just put up a notepad just to write something in front of you can you see the notepad yeah it's loading there yeah no, no, we can see. Okay. So the first thing that I wanted to understand from you is, what is estimation? Anyone? In the call. To complete specific task, what needs to be be required, and uh, within which within how many hours or uh, how much time it will take to complete that particular work is called estimation. I mean, it's a combination of both uh, what needs to be done and uh, how much time within within which time we can get that work to be done. Thank you so much, Bharat. Uh, that's a very crisp answer. What to be done and 
how to be done right uh second thing that i would add so what do you think which are the things we should keep in mind at the time of you know, putting an estimation so what are the drivers of estimation any answers uh complexity dependencies and complexity uh, probably probably uh, the oh. skill group we have the requirement skill. we have Okay, requirement. Okay, what else? What else, guys? Come on, go ahead. Efforts. Process. Process. Okay. Analysis. Analysis. Okay. Debugging. Debugging. Okay. And testing and deployment also will come at the last stage and the. Okay. And all this complexity, dependency, all requirement, all they will come in this analysis phase, and then the okay. development, then unit testing, then deployment. Okay. Can be considered yes. One more thing I just wanted to add here, and which is the basic of estimating is feasibility. So, whenever we are actually estimating something, right? First of all, we should not be just you know diving into all these things, right? Rather, we should be thinking out that how we are building this particular feature. Are we going to? Is that feature that the customer has requested, or there has been a requirement coming up in front of the PO? Is this at all a feasible requirement or not? If it is not feasible, we should be, you know, we should actually think about that. Okay, these are the alternatives of that, right? This cannot be achieved, but what can be achieved? So that's something that we need to know. Think in that way. Complexity agreed. Dependency agreed. Skill. What do you mean by skill? Koshik, Koshik, you mentioned about skill, right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. What is what is skill? So, um, means I don't. Uh, the different skill level have the different uh, consumption of time. So, in the skill, I would prefer what the uh, what are the uh, people have in the team, and based on their. Uh, 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 performance or something that we can uh, estimate that yes that can be done on a five pointer or based on their average skill so we can done on a five pointer or take it five days or technique meeting it taking two days that is that one thing should consider i think okay okay so i think i will go in that uh, that uh, separately but what me i think the first thing that we need to do is you know feasibility check number two is you know the analysis that you mentioned right so analysis can have multiple things it can have architecture definitions okay it can have uh, an nfr validations it can have a lot of things like uh, what Koshik was mentioning, I will just add it here. Resource capability. So why I'm saying this is, I might be a very average resource and to solve a particular problem, it takes me 10 days. Koshik, on the other hand, may be an extraordinary resource and he can complete everything in two days. Okay. So as a lead, as a lead of the system, what will be your estimation given to the to the customer, to the management? Two days or ten days? Tell me that. I think five, the average is it. Five five days. Why five? Why not six? No, we need to we need to we need to make average of that one. Okay. We cannot go to a, a for the expert level, you cannot go for a, a, a skill low level. I must say, you might have no information such type of skill. Okay, so we need to go so for suppose, 
So I believe that is Tanmay, right? Who was speaking? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, Tanmay, just giving you another scenario, okay? Okay. Now you have given an estimation of five days, right? Yes. But you need to actually make that work done by me only, who actually had told 10 days earlier. How are you going to achieve it? So there, there need to be a pre analysis, something need to be done. So whom? No, the who analysis can... has been done. You have actually given to give it to me that okay, this is something that you need to build. Analysis is ready, architecture is ready. How much time will you require? I said 10 days. So she says two days. You actually came in between and given a five days, right? Yes. But you given a five days, but you actually have only me available in your team. Shubhra, go ahead, please. So I have one question, Devan. So when we have estimation, right? Estimation has a couple of phases. I mean, when probably a high level estimation, a low level estimation, something I'm, happens. I'm coming to that. I'm coming to so, that. I mean, okay. this is this is in context to that scenario. So you right. have given me two two types of resources who can complete right. this particular work either on ten days or maybe on two days. Yeah. So either I have to choose a ten days thing. Or I have to choose a two days team because I know if Devan will do this thing, so I need that day. If Koshik will do this thing, I need that day. That amount of there is no alternative for me, right? Correct. So my question to you: So when we have a high level estimation, from that perspective, when we say a ballpark estimation to the client, and ballpark estimation should be very competitive in the market. So oh, how right. we can tackle that kind of scenario there? Right. I'll come just answer your question, but before that, I want to go back to Thornboy. I'll just, you know, I kept that, you know, your question with me, Shubhoto. I will answer it. I will just go back to Thornboy and, you know, first understand from his perspective as he's a lead and he's actually got into the system. I just tried to, I, I'm sure he has faced this issue. Right. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I feel this is smart. Yeah. Yes, it's actually, so how are you going to tackle it? See, actually, then, frankly speaking, I need to come in the picture. Okay. If I see that some scale issue with the guys, then suppose we need to go with that particular person. Okay, so I need I am coming in in the picture is to help them, what need to and guide them how to we can achieve in that particular five days. So these are the thing we need. I need I need to perform over there. So make he or her to achieve that one in five working days. So regularly I guide them. I come in the I come with a meeting. I use but that person has told you that you need 10 days. Yes, because how you can make it. So you actually have to put another resource there to work with him or her, right? Yeah, because kind of. Know. Yes, it's kind of that. And if the second resource also didn't work, then you have weekend working. Yes, suppose like that. So all else, okay. but I need to work with them. <laughs> you need to work. So you have your own task. You will actually leave that and you will work with it. So yeah. it's not actually going to be like that. So first of all, we need to make people understand that, you know, the logistic behind why Koshik has said two days and why the other person, the man has said 10 days. We need to kind of kind of an understanding that what is missing is Koshik underestimating or that person is overestimating. Let's have this discussion together. Let's have this discussion together so that, okay, Koshik will cover this, this is five things, right? That person might have thought few more things. You cannot always think that, you know, a person is actually giving more estimation. That means that this is not a three full resource. They might have thought of a lot of things else, right? So let's discuss that in uh, which thought process. There is, there, there is uh, so much unity in our days. If someone giving five days in top of the digging seven days. They are not no, going no. down. They are going no, down. It's not about not about any team. I will not specifically uh, no, mention about team, any no, team. Not I'm team. Just... I'm, you know, there is some so much unity of that. Actually, they go up by up. All they never go down. Suppose Koshi get built too. As but... a lead, <laughs> as, as a lead, you need to make sure that person who is actually putting <laughs> that estimation, they have a kind of a understanding of what they are trying to achieve. Yes. Break it down in small ways. Okay. understand okay. that how that person actually is defining uh, the breakdowns so let them say that okay you said 10 days what is going to take 10 days now he will say that okay i will break this thing on two days this thing on one day you might see that okay he might have covered few more things and added them to 10 days you can just say i don't need these three things for now i will take this later so your 10 days now has become seven days okay what can be done we actually have to talk in that process 
we actually oh. need to understand that if somebody is actually providing an estimation, what is the purpose? It might happen that you know, Koushik might have underestimated the thing. But there are other aspects of the things as well which got missed. Right. And yeah. sometimes actually it actually happens. Whenever we actually provide an estimation to a particular story or particular bug, sometimes we don't cover all the aspect areas, right? Of the entire thing. Mm -hmm. And that actually comes back to us as bugs. And which we actually take more time, you know, solving the bugs. So it's better that you know, as a kind of a uh, system holder, we actually sit together and understand, okay, Koshik, this is what I need to build. This is what the thing that I need to build. You are making it two days. Can you just tell me, you know, what are the things that you will cover? And as a lead, as a validator, you need to validate the estimations. And okay, you need to, okay, put, put a kind of a way that, okay, now uh, Koshik has said three things, but I need three more things as well. Ask Koshik, Koshik, when these three things will be covered? If we are not asking questions, these three things will get missed. This will come back as a bug. I'm telling you. This will come back as a bug. But if we discuss and we get a kind of an agreement, Koshik might increase his estimation from two days to four days. But on those four days, every single thing will be covered. Now, coming back to Shubrato's point, that uh, somebody is telling two days, somebody is telling 10 days. So whenever the ballpark estimation comes into the picture, right, Shubrato, I think uh, you and I both face this issue very often. So I think the best way to go by this is that we actually go by an industry standard. Now, there can be an internal standard as well that, you know, earlier we used to think that uh, to build a drag and drop question quiz, it takes only 20 minutes. It never happens. So now we need to think in a that way that we, okay, you have two days, you have 10 days. There is a middle ground which the lead can think of, right? Okay. Overall, I have estimations clear. It might take around six days. Now, when it comes back to us saying that, okay, you need to deliver this on six days, by that time, we will be able to justify what are the th things that we can do as part of the six, six days. So we cannot just say that, okay, in six days, we'll deliver everything. At the time of, you know, putting the estimation, there will be assumptions. Okay. Two days, five days, I'm, I'm giving it a six days task. In six days, I will complete these this, 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 this line items. Let's share that with the customer. If the customer agrees that, okay, these are the six things that I need, or these are the 10 things that I needed in six days, they agree, we deliver only those things. But if the customer actually says that, no, we need more things like that, you know, another 10 things maybe, we devise our estimations. And uh, <laughs> similarly, if, if somebody, you know, the customer says, okay, you actually have gone beyond, I don't need this, this much of things. Let's reduce our estimations. I will come back to MVP, uh, I think, Shubhata, but I will listen to you first. Go ahead. Devan, I mean, in that context, so when we do a high level estimation, right? right. Sometimes uh, estimator may not be aware of the internal complexity at minute level. Right. It, it, it happens in general case because he. Right. In it matters with the, with the organization practice that you told that a certain organization measures certain things, maybe a 10 hour work, a same work can be measured in other organization by a 20 hour or 25 hours work. Yeah. So, so I mean, when we do that kind of thing, we also need to think about, I mean, the skill level and the worst case and the best case that you have mentioned, right? A two pointer work or maybe a 10 pointer work. Right. And most of these cases that when this ballpark estimation happens, they just, just put the average that comes in between line and they do the uh, I mean, general estimation over there. But what I found that if there are in whole estimation, entire work may not be complex, right? Maybe out of 100 items, maybe we have 10, 15 items. So in those 10, 15 items, the, that estimator should go there and analyze those at minute level because there might be a huge risk if estimation goes wrong, right? Right. So you can suggest. Uh, yeah. So I think another way of you know, estimate putting the estimation is something that it called. Uh, so what we do is we actually divide the features. So suppose there are feature one, feature two, feature three. Now you actually have added the line items over here. X1 in feature two, these th three things needs to be done. In feature two, other other maybe 10 things needs to be done, whatever. Right? 
So what we can do is we can add a confidence flag at the time of sharing the high level estimation with the customer that what is our confidence on the estimation. Okay. If we say our confidence is high, that denotes there will be only 10% deviations on the estimation. So if I have given 100 hours of estimation, I will be able to complete by 110 hours. If we say our confidence is medium, that always depends on, you know, uh, on, on outer dependencies, uh, uh, complexity of the system architecture, everything. If we actually put a kind of a medium confidence, that actually goes to a 20% deviation on the estimation. So 100 hour can go up to 120 hours. The customer needs to understand that. At the same time, if we have low confidence, mention that as well. So for a, so for the 15 items, Shubhrato, you just mentioned that right, the, uh, the complexity may come up. I would have given the estimation to the customer saying that, okay, this is what I understood from your features, that these are the 20 things that I need to achieve. There are challenges. Okay, these are the challenges. The architecture is a challenge. The integration is a challenge. There can be a challenge with the holidays or whatever. So that's actually coming to the plan. So this is what. But at the same time, there can be challenges with the software versions, R&D, all these things coming into the picture. So my confidence is low here. So the low means, you know, around 30% deviation. And I believe customers widely accept this confidence flag. So at the time of putting a ballpark estimation, let's not put only the hours or the days or the numbers, rather put a kind of a confidence as well, so that the customer understand, okay, out of these 100 items, 85 items, they have a high confidence thing, right? They can do it anyway. So that 10% deviation, that means you know, it can be completed with a 90 to 110. Fine with that. Uh, maybe 15 of them, uh, maybe 10 of them, they actually are having uh, a medium confidence. Okay, there can be an estimation difference there. Five or ten of them, they are actually having a low confidence. Okay, there can be an estimation difference on that. So if we put our estimations or the ballpark estimation in such a way, it always actually you know creates a kind of a transparency between us and the customer. So the customer also understand. Okay, even if they have actually provided an estimation, there can be a deviation on that. So based on that, we can plan. And the early we actually so so we have actually said that okay, we have a low confidence and but. As soon as we start working on the feature, the early we can come up with a kind of a, uh, understanding that, okay, these are the challenges. And I think these are the gaps that I can identify. And these are the places where I think the estimation will increase. As soon as we can say that, I believe no customer will going to you know, de deny you know, whatever is that. I think somebody has raised a hand. Not sure. Uh, not really. Uh, Shubhrata, does that give you a kind of a brief, uh, uh, you know, an alternative? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's why I mean I, we generally struggle maybe at uh, one critical point that you have mentioned that these two point and ten pointed things, and that also comes in that high level estimation because a lot of things when we decide right say probably a five hundred work uh, hours of work we suggested to the client, but mm -hmm. when we came at the ground level, that five hundred hours become a fifteen hundred hours. Yeah, that that actually becomes because you know we actually should should have uh, considered you know the peripherals of the estimations, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes we don't take time for analysis. We don't take time for uh, uh, we don't take time for you know that the architecture design. We don't take estimations of when the bug fixes will take place, when the deployment will take place. We are only considering that uh, uh, there might be you know, a way that we will only deploy to dev. But what happens when the code actually moves from dev to queue? Yes. So we don't do it, we don't count that timeline. I believe you go to that answers your question. Right? Yes, yes. Perfect, perfect. Okay. Uh, now coming to the very last few things, there are you know few things that we can you know play around with our customers. So telling go ahead and telling that you know you are not getting anything doesn't make any customer happy. If I am a customer, you would just suddenly come back. I have a planned release on March, and you suddenly come back saying me that, no, hey, uh, I'm not going to deliver this feature to you. Right? It will not make me happy. Rather, what we can propose is MVP, minimal viable product. So what we can say, we can even come up with a kind of a product that, hey, you wanted this 10 feature, right? Okay. But unfortunately, there are some, you know, these are the issues that we are actually facing. There is a lack of integrations or lack of you know problems that we are actually seeing. But 
I can give you the seven features all at a time. So you can take this as an MVP so that you can go live with an MVP. These are the few things that will not be working, but initially that will not cause any problem to you. We will slowly add this feature. So a concept of MVP comes into the picture. So as a lead, as an architect, you need to be able to understand that we are actually be defining this MVPs. This MVPs are very important. Sometimes it always will happen that you will find something or the other at the time of development. You will find some blocker, something. But the delivery must go on, right? If you cannot just ask the customer that it will not be good. So rather, I would say discuss with the customer. Say that, OK, these are the problems we are actually facing. Instead of I'm giving you this, I can give you an alternative of this, which is still satisfying your need, which is still satisfying what you desire for. But we cannot give the full thing right away. Rather, we'll be giving you this as part of this release as part of next release. I believe every customer is actually ready to you know, get this kind of an MVP. So this MVP is a very, very, very important thing that we need to you know, uh, come up with the things. At the same time, now this, this comes to the architect or the lead level, right? Who are actually doing this all these you know, decisions. Now coming down to the development level. So a developer who is actually putting the estimation he only cares about that user study or that feature that they are actually working on. They don't care about where actually it gets fitted, how it's actually integrating with other systems, because we don't involve our time understanding the system. That's the main problem. We need to make every single member of the team, whether it is a dev, whether it is a QA, that this is what we are building and how that small thing fits into the bigger picture. If somebody understands, OK, this thing actually will go in this, they will start thinking about the dependencies. Even as a kind of a lead or architect also, you will be able to understand, OK, if this actually goes in there, I have a dependency from two places that I need to count at the time of putting the estimation. Now, it's not only the dependency that needs to be thought about. Another thing is the approach that we are actually going. right? You can write, you know, an easy way to write a small if else block and it passes everything. Oh, it's a one hour job, simple. Or you can think of you know, building a class, the class methods, all these things, right? Now, which way we should be going? That should be decided upon discussing with your lead. Whatever the approach is that you're actually having in your mind, right? That, okay, I will be developing this feature in this way. Discuss this with your lead. And here comes your KRA. Here comes your credibility. Here comes your uh, innovation, your existence. That, OK, as a developer, I can think in two different ways. Now, I am not a person that I can decide that you know, which one to go with. That's why I need my lead to think about it. Talk to. If you are not thinking, each and every developer needs to think like a lead. Else, they will not ever be a lead, I'm telling you. If you think that okay, you will be spoon faded and uh, you will be every time you will be given a kind of a way that, okay, Tonmoy or Koshi, Kotanya, any one of the leads come up and say that, okay, you need to go in this, this, this way, and you will just blindly follow it, that will hamper your credibility. You need to come up with a plan that, okay, I will be building this. Now, you put a kind of estimation. If I go in that way, it will take me two days. If I go in that way, that will take me three days. OK, now in, if I go in three days, even if I am getting extra day, but I can make sure that other dependencies are resolved, no other you know, bugs will come up, and it is a very stable workshop. Make your lead understand that. Why you are going for the three days option? Why not a two days option? I'm pretty sure they will understand. Now, this happens to your development. What about? Thinking of that, you know, when your code actually code got merged to dev, you will be doing a dev testing with an integrated system. Then when it comes to uh, when your code actually gets moved to QA, the QA team will validate, right? They will share, you know, a few bugs. There can be another bug coming up. You need to at least analyze and say that, okay, this bug is for me. This bug is not for me. This bug is actually separate. You need that analysis time. Include those as well. You need to think of an estimation not only for your development, 
but end to end closing of a feature from starting to end when the development starts to the ticket close till that time you actually have to think and you actually have to put that on the development or on the estimation anyone disagrees can put your hands up i think we all we're all on the same page uh i will not actually will be you know speaking more about this i think uh, the estimation is a very rough thing that we need to make sure but we need to also think about the planning and delivery because if we actually consume a lot of time right building a feature and that is actually that becomes a never deliverable feature correct then it's a problem we need to think that how we can bake a particular feature in a small way and add in you know, a smaller estimation to each of them so that even if the entire feature is not delivered we can create that mvp out of it right that okay these are the five things that we go to deliver but if you actually are holding a very large you know kind of a feature together and have put in an estimation of 30 days and before the 30 days i as a customer i as a management layer person i'm not able to see anything that automatically triggers the panic button and you know what happens in most of the cases at the 25th day you will find an issue because on the 25th day you will start stitching all things together right so let's not go in that way break down as much as possible and define your features okay the feature has 10 things in list okay this 10 user stories smaller let's not be five pointer let's be two pointer two pointer two pointer and then push the things together it doesn't make doesn't you know make sense that you know if you are allowed to take eight pointer or five pointer in your sprint you will only take one story which will be having eight pointers you can have four stories which have two pointers each so that even if your last story spills over, right? Only two points get spilled over. It's not that entire eight points that get spilled over. Right? And even on that perspective, you know, the scrum masters, the managers, the management people, the customers, everyone understands, okay, eight things needs have to be done. Six of them have been already done, has been signed off. Now two things, that's fine. We can accommodate in the next bit. But if you are actually spilling the entire eight pointers, that's the problem. So break down things as much as possible. And as a lead, as an architect, definition of the MVP is very much needed. So you need to think of an alternative every time. There can be a challenge. But we need to think that, OK, if th this is not working, that what can be done elsewhere? And based on that, we need to choose our path. Uh, I will pause here. I will wait for any question from the forum. No question means everybody have understood everything. No, Devan, uh, just one question. Go ahead. Uh, before we starting a high level estimation, so what are the prerequisites? Means um, uh, sometimes we uh, missed something, or before we started the estimation, the X, Y, Z, this thing. Right. First of all, the requirement needs to be detailed out, right? So whenever we are actually putting an estimation, talk to your peers, talk to your BAs, tech BAs, whoever it is, right? Or even if you have the permission to talk to customer, understand their requirement very thoroughly. Okay, I will be doing this on the right for you. They have to say yes to everything. First, sign of the requirements. If the requirements are based on assumptions, then it's a problem. The customer has said something, me as a PO has thought something else, I have modified the requirement. I have actually given that to you. You actually provided an estimation. The customer is happy with the estimation later point when actually you are developing and delivering the things. What happens is the customer denies that, okay, I, I never wanted this. So first of all, signing of the requirements is the pre one. Next thing is, have we done a good amount of analysis on top of it? Do we have a plan ready that how we are going to put the features ahead? These are the things I think we need to be very clear. So my personal preference is that, you know, ideally architects and uh, uh, tech leads, senior tech leads people 
should always work one pi ahead so if i am on pi3 and my pi4 starts from january i should be working on the items of pi4 right now i should not be worrying about you know what is going on in the execution rather i will make sure that pi4 items are been in a streamlined properly so if the analysis have been done if the architecture have been created all the plans are everything is in place based on that i will start you know adding the ballpoint estimations koshik does that answer your question Mm, yes, yes. Means the most important thing is the requirement. Which requirement is, side. We are going to. So yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Arif, you you have to be you know, raise your hand. Ah uh, yes. Ah uh, so the the thing is uh, all of these estimations. I am understanding each and every aspect of it from you guys. But the most of the guys will agree. We have been hearing this thing like the client says if everything. is already made we just have to use it and uh, develop it so it should not take that much effort it should not require that much time i don't know somehow the client has got this uh, impression like it doesn't take time but uh, the technical people know the things are different architecture of project is different we are using ui components and things do take time but yeah this is the Thing we hear everyone more. in the system, right? Everyone in the system, whether it is a developer, whether it is a senior developer, whether it is a lead, whether it is an architect, has the right to tell that okay, this is what I'm thinking, and I think the estimation that has been put on the plate, right, is wrong. You need to, you cannot just say going ahead that okay, hey, three days will not be enough. You have to tell them that why will not be enough in three days. You need to come up with a kind of a breakdown. If you can actually showcase that why you are saying three days are not enough, I don't believe that you know any customer will disagree. They disagree because they don't have that understanding of you know why you are asking for that extra two days. Mm -hmm. The plan actually doesn't get ready by us, right? Mm -hmm. So we only think that okay, hey, you know, three days may not be enough. Two days will be enough. What is the rationale behind it? Are we thinking of that? Okay. Mm -hmm. first day i will do this second day it will take this third day i will be doing bug fixing fourth day is for deployment fifth day is for bug fixing if i can put it in that way right mm -hmm. you would have it, it also can happen that you are saying that in you know, the 5 days your lead can say a your uh, reviewing and bug fixing can be done on the same day deployment and bug fixing can be done on the same day mm -hmm. right so mm -hmm. why are you uh, aren't you know putting those two together and making a four day that discussion that discussion is very much needed that Mm -hmm. we need to make sure that we don't actually assume things we don't actually put things over our over our conceptual way or assumption way it will take another two days you have to justify mm -hmm. if you can justify i'm pretty sure learning mate as an organization always have encouraged people that how we can you know get out to get the best out of the people out. okay so mm -hmm. even if i am an architect you are telling me that okay the bad you have told it will be done in a five days i believe it will take 7 days i will first ask that adi tell me you know how you thinking in 7 days we will fight mm -hmm. we will fight like hell but if you can still make me understand it's a 7 day i will agree with you but if you just come and tell me 5 din mein nahi hoga 7 din chahiye main tumse bahas karunga bhai nahi hoga tumse tumhara mm -hmm. so this is this is you need to you need to be you know more proactive discussing things with your lead uh you have peer discuss about things that okay this is what i'm thinking that how i'm going to build in this way or rather it might also happen na that the architect or the lead who has actually given a ballpark estimation of a 6 days right you mm -hmm. suddenly say that okay hey, there is a better way of doing it and mm -hmm. i can you know complete it in 3 days mm -hmm. also can happen right why we also already all all you know always thinking of you know that 6 days will get increased to 10 days Six days can be reduced to three days as well, right? But that all depends on the credibility and the innovation of the person who is actually working on it. Mm -hmm. So when I speak to the QA people, I always say that in this way: that if you are actually testing it smartly, you can easily, you know, reduce the number of days. Or if you just going ahead and checking each and everything on each and every browser. Rather, I know click functionality works on all browsers, so all browsers will behave same similarly. I just need to check iPad or mobile. My testing scope or the testing plan depends. Becomes you know very limited, so work smartly. You actually have to talk through the things. You need to come up with a kind of you know your inside innovations. I think that that's enough. But the most important point is you need to talk to people. 
you have to put a rationals on top of it that why it is three days not five days why it is five days not seven days mm -hmm. does that answer your question yes yes thanks Shubhra, go ahead so Sorry. one thing devan what i saw probably when a project manager or maybe an architect have a stable team okay so all those people who are I mean, working together for a long period of time they are doing well they up their skill level they understand the relevant system very well and suddenly we lose 10 15 people from a big team okay but when that estimation happened in that time architects actually measured entire thing in context of number of people and what kind of skill sets they have and suddenly when these 10 people go out 10 15 people go out and new people came right they need some amount of time to adjust with the system okay and in that particular phase a lot of projects actually struggled a lot right mm -hmm. agree agree so i think because, because Shubhra, we don't have because we don't have that much of bench policy right i mean where we can say that project manager is allowed to take few resources as a backup at least at very key level uh, so that they can have an immediate alternate uh, option available, right? Right. So, Shubhrata, I think you are absolutely right on this point. But I think that actually comes under how we are managing resources, right? And how we are actually treating them. So a, a, a resource leaving the team is not welcome at any condition. I would not recommend, you know, so they leave because of certain things. Uh, those are actually separate aspects rather than estimations. Uh, but I think you are absolutely right. We need to kind of, a, I, I think as a skill director, I, I pretty, I'm pretty sure you are actually having some plans in the future to mitigate these kind of a challenges. But yeah, that's a separate discussion. And I think we are always, you know, uh, there to I mean, I mean, it's, it's a very realistic ground level. Evidence. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a realistic ground because as soon as you are actually adding a new resource who doesn't have an understanding of the system, the understanding itself takes time, right? To make them believe that, okay, they understand the system and then they start working on it. So the productivity always goes down, right? So uh, in that case, I think the best, you know, transparent way would be that, you know, talk to the client and saying that, okay, there are a couple of new resources we are actually adding onto the team your things will not get delivered by this time but what we do is we never tell it in front of the client i mean i mean Be stay to, true before client right i mean what is the realistic situation according no, to I, I always prefer to be mm. transparent in front of the customer because they are yes. paying us right mm. if we actually be transparent they will also understand our situation that you know which situation mm. we are in and that that makes everyone's life easy but if we don't speak with the customer properly then it's a problem then it's, it's a bit... I, I can I can give an example over here. I mean, people like Kavi, Arif, Tanmay, who uh, I mean, at least one year back when mm -hmm. I started working with them, they were really struggling with this new approach and entire thing. But after one year, you saw I mean how these people are right now performing. I Absolutely. Mean, same, yeah. Same thing happened with everyone. With uh, with time and opportunity, you have to grow and you have to have some level of patience within you. I mean, there will be pressure, there will be work-life balance, I can understand. But in between time, if you want to learn and do well in the project, I mean, the challenging project, you have to have some level of patience. Absolutely. 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 You want to but at anything? the same time, Shubhrato, I believe it's the responsibility of the senior people of the team to mm -hmm. assure them that, okay, learn it for yourself. If you are going to fail, I'm there with you. Right. It's not like that you are actually standing down under a gelatin. <laughs> it should not be like that. <laughs> yes, yes, definitely. Well, I believe what the senior folks needs yeah. to be, you know, in that way that okay, they yeah. have to be supportive. They have to be, you know, collaborative with the with the people newly joining the team. Uh, based on that, they can do that. I believe Gautam has that, that point. That point you have to now as a tell you when you start a discussion with the approach right. that what approach developer is taking. Right. That actually gives at least 60 percent confidence when people Absolutely. start writing the code because he get entire idea about how to actually present that thing at the code level, right? Absolutely, Absolutely. yes. And I believe all the tech leads which are the, who are there on the call will all agree with me here. We all agree with you. There is no other. So, Gautam, you want to say anything, Gautam? 
yes yes, 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 yes. Uh, yes what can i do uh, if a task is uh, related to r and d either r and d or uh, data are not proper just uh, i want five uh, five uh, data but uh, data coming only two day two key so that time we are stuck in okay so if it comes to r and d guys so we will take r and d very transparently so you meant uh, you remember uh, gautam i was telling about the confidence fees right that uh, 10% 20% 30% confidence fees yes, yes so on this low confidence fees right we actually have to tell the customer that okay these are actually the low in confidence for us because we need to do some r and d r and d should be closed that we should say that okay i will do the r and d and this would be the outcome of it i will not devote you know maybe a month time in r and d and then come up with saying that hey nothing is working we should be you now having a closed r and d saying that okay i am doing an r and d on this piece and i'm pretty sure what will happen is uh, maybe uh, after you know three days i can tell you if this r and d is going to work or not if that doesn't work the next two days i will work on this alternative and after this five days the r and d is done i will be having the next set of user stories or the tasks ready for me that okay after this r and d is done i know what to achieve how to achieve i might not be the person who will be actually developing the code but i will make sure that the other person understands so i have a document ready with me right we have a set of tasks ready for the other person that okay these are the next step of things that you need to do in order to achieve it now if you are actually facing some kind of a problem in between our r and d right you need to deep dive and you need to talk between the teams you are make uh, calling an api the api should give five data points instead of it gives two right you talk to the lead that i need five data points i am not getting it i am i actually going to get blocked if i not get this in another days okay let the lead talk to the other team members say that okay you need to have this ready by next day but if you don't speak and you wait till the fifth day saying that okay i just did the r and d with two data points that will not going to help but we are starting first of all uh, our ui part if uh, okay. i have covered uh, two days for ui part uh, functionality is working and at the time of uh, api call if mm -hmm. i'm uh, collecting all the uh, data and uh, then we are calling api and mm -hmm. api not providing uh, proper response no 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 so, no go to go to don't think it that way rather you understand it in this way that you know at the very first day that i need to build a ui like this then the ui need to call an http api which should give me a return of that right yes you know that on the very first day so instead of directly jumping into writing codes and waiting for the third day to connect with api open postman hit that api on the very first day and see if you are getting the data or not if you are not getting the data highlight it on the very first day i am not getting data i will take another two days to complete my ui on that second day i need the data coming from the server if it is not happening i am getting blocked now it's not your responsibility the scrum master and the lead's responsibility to make sure that the api is actually working because you raised it on the first day what we do the mistake we do is we actually raise the problem on the very fourth day so now everybody is panicked hey my api is not working but we could have just checked that api in the very first day right? saying that hey the api is not working i am not blocked right now because i have two days of task in my hand that i can work independently but on the third day i need to make a call to this api which is not working so you got two days to fix this problem think in that way does that answer your question gautam yes 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 uh, answer perfect so devan i think we have uh, stressed a little bit with our stream yeah. time so this is a very very it's nice like i am a, i am a tiktoker this is a, this is a very nice discussion with everyone i mean you kavi karma contributed well and lot of people from yes. mme track actually jumps with their experience this is a nice discussion okay absolutely and i think yeah, from I think. this from this estimation part specifically i am telling you because this is holding a very key thing in our work life balance absolutely because 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 when we talk about we need to stretch maybe on weekends we need to see i mean we need to see ourselves whether are we really correct or we are wrong am i that much competitive or estimation is right i am not that much of competitive correct okay so you have to do a certain level of justice i mean to i mean raise a point on those things okay and i told you everyone that you have to have some level of patience okay 
to, to grow in as a, a developer as a lead or as an architect whoever in the in the system okay they are they are in the system for a very long period of time okay and you have to have that patience you have to have that creative mindset then you will grow i think we Absolutely. are done. we are we are done from our side okay uh, if anyone has any kind of thing you can write us down okay if any another training or any another kind of planning or discussion will require then we will again can connect and have a discussion thank you devan thank you everyone thank you guys yeah bye bye thank you devan yeah, thank you. Thank you. i will thank share you. the feedback form through mail thanks thank paramita submit thank you ah uh, thanks devan Thanks, thanks everyone. Thanks, Devan. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.